Hello health champions! Today we're going to talk about bacon and what would happen if you ate bacon every day for 30 days. There are so many misconceptions about bacon. If you do a search for fat in cooked bacon, for example, the very first thing that pops up is saturated fat in cooked bacon. Because we have this phobia, this cultural phobia of saturated fat. There are certain things that we've heard so many times that they have been conditioned, not because they're true, but we take them as true because we've heard them so often. And then it becomes a cultural belief that is so hard to break. I found this article that says, can bacon be part of a healthy diet? They're very concerned because they're saying there's a bacon explosion in America. They're saying they're bacon recipes sweeping the blogosphere. They're saying that fast food restaurants are offering double bacon burgers and they're even putting bacon in chocolate bars. And again, they're focusing on the bacon as being the bad thing. A little bit down the page, they're asking just how unhealthy is bacon? And if you were to ask a straight question, it would be, is bacon healthy or unhealthy? But again, they're feeding in to this cultural belief. It's a presupposition. We're assuming already that bacon is unhealthy. The only question is just how unhealthy is it? They're saying 68% of bacon's calories come from fat and almost half of that is saturated. So again, it's a preconceived notion. We're already believing that fat is bad because we've heard it so many times. And in each ounce of bacon, you get 30 milligrams of cholesterol, scary word. And if you have eggs with it, then there's more cholesterol there. And eating these saturated fats will raise your cholesterol levels, increasing your risk of heart disease and stroke. But this is old information. This is a cultural belief based on information from 50, 60, 70 years ago. And in fact, they never found any causal link between saturated fat and heart disease. But it's one of these things that it just takes generations to get rid of, even when the good new information is available. And in fact, the opposite is true, that if you eat more saturated fat, but you lay off some carbohydrates and some sugar, then your insulin levels are gonna go down and insulin is responsible for all of the metabolic syndrome that is responsible for heart disease and stroke. And if you watch more videos like this and read some comments, then you'll find out that there are millions of people who are eating more fat, more saturated fat, and they're reversing all their risk markers for heart disease. So am I saying that bacon is the perfect food? No. I think it's an okay food, but it's not the saturated fat. What you want to watch out for is if they load it up with too much sugar. Now, typically you're not going to eat enough bacon and they don't put all that much sugar in it for sugar to become a problem. If you have a few slices, you probably get about one gram of sugar and that's not a big deal unless you eat a bunch of other sugar along with it. What you also want to be concerned with is preservatives and nitrates as well as any other chemicals that they might put in there. So you just want to be careful. Get a good quality product, read the labels, and the fewer ingredients in that bacon, the better. The bigger issue is what we have with it. If some people order this, they might think that bacon is the worst part of this when it might be the best thing. The worst things would probably be the bun, the sugar in the dressing, the French fries that you might eat with it, and the soda that often comes along with it as well. And why then is that such a big deal? Why are these the villains? Because they promote insulin and insulin resistance. The bun and the sugar and virtually everything in there, the fries, they are full of glucose. They're full of starch that breaks down into glucose. And of course that becomes blood sugar and stimulate insulin. The sugar is going to drive insulin in itself because half of it is glucose, 
but the other half, 50% glucose, 50% fructose, and the fructose is almost as bad on the liver as alcohol. It is going to clog up the liver and it promotes insulin resistance as well. And if you eat all those carbohydrates, then the fat becomes a bad thing because your body is busy burning the carbohydrates and then it can't burn through. It can't use that saturated fat the way it's intended for fuel. And also because insulin is a storage hormone, high levels of insulin is going to prevent fat burning. When it comes to food, we have to start looking at the big picture. So many people are asking, well, is this food good? Is this food bad? And yes, there are good and bad foods. These processed foods, there's not really anything good about them. But for the most part, it's about the dose. How much of something are we getting? If there's one gram of sugar in a food, I don't really care because it's not going to hurt the big picture. How often are we getting that dose? What are the mechanisms? How does the body react to these things? And we also have to start understanding individuality. We have to understand that we react differently, that one person can eat certain things that will totally mess up another person. I had one patient who was very, very diligent about keto, low carb, intermittent fasting, but he could not get his fasting blood sugar down. After many, many weeks, finally, we kind of took a closer look and I asked, is there anything else? And he said, well, just these apple cider vinegar gummies and these vitamin D gummy bears. So they were two of each for a total of four gummy bears, two grams of sugar in each, eight grams of sugar. And that totally messed up his whole metabolic system. For another person that was better at processing carbohydrate, that might not even have been a blip on the radar. But for this guy, it made all the difference. He cut those gummy bears out and his blood sugar went from 130 to 90 in a week. So let's look at an example. If we eat some bacon and then we eat some bread and we eat some sugar, like a fast food meal, then that's not so great. But if someone was to have a salad with some bread and some sugar, then that's still not great, but it would actually be a whole lot better. Why is that? Because the bread and the sugar is going to stimulate a lot of insulin in both cases. And that high insulin is going to keep us from burning through the fat in the bacon. And if we have the same insulin levels now from bread and sugar, then a salad is going to be a whole lot better because you don't have to burn through a salad. There's nothing there in the first place. So bacon is a much more concentrated food that we can burn through. We can use that fat if insulin levels are low. If insulin levels are high, it's still not good, but it's better than with the salad. What would be even better, of course, is if we cut out those things altogether that promote insulin and we eat the bacon and the salad. So that's the main thing to understand about fat is you can eat quite a bit of fat as long as you don't eat foods that trigger insulin because the insulin is going to keep you from burning the fat. So you can increase the fat, but then you have to decrease the carbs significantly at the same time. Sometimes you hear people talking about a low carb diet where you're still eating 20, 30, 40% of your calories from carbohydrate. That is not a low carbohydrate diet. It is not low enough for most people because you're still going to keep those insulin levels too high to actually use up that fat. So what would happen then if you ate bacon every day for 30 days? Well, don't expect a miracle. It's probably not going to revolutionize your life. You're probably not going to reverse a whole bunch of conditions. I'm not trying to say that. But if you like it, then you can eat bacon every day for 30 days. You don't have to be afraid of it. 
right? There's nothing wrong with it. You just have to buy a good quality of bacon. You want to make sure it doesn't have a bunch of chemicals and things in it. And then along with it, you eat a variety of foods. Don't eat only bacon. Eat it with a salad. Eat something else as well. And the good part now, though, is if you were to eat a little bit more bacon than you have, and then that helps you eat less of something else, like sugar or carbohydrates, then that's a good thing because bacon is very satisfying. It's very filling. And therefore, it's probably going to decrease the insulin if it can help you reduce the carbs. And then you get more stable blood sugar, blood glucose. And if you have more stable blood sugar, you'll probably notice more stable energy levels. And overall, you just happen to feel better. And you also will probably notice that you have less cravings. You have more control over your appetite and what you eat. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love that one. And if you truly want to master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell and turn on all the notifications so you never miss a life-saving video.